Good morning, Moab. Abotai Bezoshim in high is going to be at seven. Please be on time. Continuing in the Arachot of Muktzeh, we were discussing the topic of Muktzeh Mahmat Mitzvah. And we said that this form of Muktzeh, which means designated or set aside for the purpose of Mitzvah, is not really correlated to Shabbat or Yom Tov. It applies during the week also, which means any Mitzvah item that's designated for the purpose of that Mitzvah and set aside for that cannot be used for other mundane purposes, for purposes that are not of the mitzvah. One of the examples of such a thing, we already discussed the sukkah, but also a lulav and uh, etog. For example, the hadasim, as the Gemara tells us, have a good smell to it. Uh, during the rest of the year, if you want to smell hadasim, let's say today, a typical Friday, you want to smell hadasim, no problem. There's nothing else, because the hadasim are not inherently mitzvah uh, a month, a month and a half before Sukkot. However, during the week of Sukkot, the hadasim that were designated for the purpose of the mitzvah that you purchased uh, through Rav Bin Yamin Babayev, you purchased hadasim and uh, designated for the mitzvah. Now you want to take them, oh, yishtabach shemo, these hadasim, they're so good, I'm going to do another mitzvah with them, I'm going to smell them, you're not allowed to. You're not allowed to smell the hadasim. Why? Because it's muktzeh machmat mitzvah. It has nothing to do with Shabbat. It's true on Shabbat. It's true on the Chag. It's true during Chol HaMoed. Even just a regular weekday of the week of Sukkot, would you, you would not be allowed to do that. What's fascinating is the Gemara says, although you're not allowed to smell the hadasim, you're allowed to smell the etog. Why are you allowed to smell the etog? Ah, that's also huktzeh mitzvah to. So Gemara says, very simple, because the etog is primary purpose is to eat. So when you are huktzayet le mitzvato, what did you designate it not for eating? Because that's its general primary purpose. So therefore, the mitzvah is being designated to not eat it. However, the smelling of the etog is peripheral. That's not included in the aktzah. As opposed to the adasim, there is no eating. So the whole question is about the smelling. And therefore, the uktsari mitzvah to is to not smell. Therefore, there's a difference between a etog and a hadas. Nevertheless, the Shulchan Aruch says you're not supposed to smell a etog during Sukkot. And this is very fascinating. A lot of people do not know this halakha. People take their etog. Wow, smells so good. You're not allowed to do that during Sukkot for a different reason. Because we have a safek if you can make a bracha on it. And since we're not sure if you're able to make a bracha, you're not able to, we would uh, we choose not to smell. The Shulchan Aruch says better not to smell it to avoid the question of should I say a bracha on the smell during the Chag or not. The truth is the rest of the year, there's no question, of course you say a bracha on the smell of etog, if it smells good, but during Sukkot, because it's designated for the mitzvah, it's not clear that you would make a bracha on it. And therefore, although there is a way to smell it during Sukkot, is you would make a bracha on a different uh, fruit that has a good smell to it, and then once you're ready to a bracha on a different fruit, you'll be able to smell the etog. However, to smell the etog outright, is not allowed, but for a peripheral reason, not because of the reason of Muktzeh. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen v'amen.